Normally we make baby and toddler clothing um, and with all of this that's going on um, we realized our sewing skills uh, could be helpful so I started making masks about a month ago um, and they're non-medical grade masks they are made with um, with woven cotton fabric which um, there's some research to show that those do help so myself and one of my production assistants have been um, working around the clock trying to make as many as we can so yeah it's been a bit of a shift um, and a lot of work, um, but we're really glad we're helping the, with the communities. Well, thanks, Lindsay, for uh, getting just uh, getting, uh, putting some uh, got the time away to uh, just have a chat and stuff about your new uh, update about your business and stuff. I, it's recently heard that you uh, often like face masks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So normally we make baby and toddler clothing, um, and with all of this that's going on, um, we realized our sewing skills uh, could be helpful. So I started making masks about a month ago, um, and they're non-medical grade masks. They are made with um, with woven cotton fabric, which um, there's some research to show that those do help. So myself and one of my production assistants have been um, working around the clock trying to make as many as we can. So yeah, it's been a bit of a shift um, and a lot of work, um, but we're really glad we're helping the, with the community, so. And have you like focused on like who would like, buy them or has been like? So we started with just donating them. Um, a couple of my neighbors work at the hospital and so I sent them um, a couple dozen and they were able to use those and give them out also to patients who were visiting the hospitals um, just to increase uh, the level of safety. And then we had so many requests um, after a couple of weeks of people that were desperately needing them. I had some customers who had children who had to attend appointments at Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto and they were really nervous taking them there. So we developed a kids pattern shortly after that. Um, for the kids who needed them. And then we started selling uh, small batches on our website um, and offering the option for people to also donate a mask so that they can help us with the donations because um, we've run out of our fabric um, a couple of times now <laughs> using up old fabrics and things that we had on hand. And we've had to purchase materials. So all the donations and the purchases of the masks are helping um, us to buy more materials so that we can keep making them. So, yeah. It's amazing to see all the the, guys, the local businesses just like changing the way that they are making the products. They just, they just make yes. Them. Yeah, no, it's wonderful and the innovation is super, super cool. Um, there's a local group and they were 3D printing um, a little sewing accessory uh, to make bias tape. And a lot of the masks we're doing have elastic on them like these, which are easy for people to put on and off quickly. Um, but the medical professionals often prefer the ties that go around the head. Um, and a lot of us sewists don't have um, a bias tape maker, which is basically the thing that makes the long strips of fabric um handy so actually they realized that they can be 3d printed and so these little tiny devices um were handed out to many of the sewing community um so that we could move, work a little bit faster um, making the masks so how long does it take to like make each one or so it depends on how fast you are at sewing. I've obviously been sewing for many, many years. So I'm, I'm faster than some people um, probably would be, but I can usually make one in about 10 or 15 minutes, depending on the style um, and the complexity of it. And a lot of home sewists have um, started helping out using their quilting fabrics and their home sewing machines and making thousands. And I'm part of a couple of groups on Facebook um, that they've been donating masks and scrub caps and headbands. Um, and it's really inspiring to see everyone coming together and um, doing what they can to help, so. And, uh, got it. and finally, I think we got to know you have kids and stuff. And, uh... Yes. So how are you doing with everybody at home and your family? 
<laughs> um, it's been very challenging. Um, I've moved a sewing station into my living room. So I used to have a studio at home. Um, and when I moved here a year ago into my current space, um, into our shop, um, my husband took over my space at the house. So now I have a table set up in the living room so I can sew while the kids are doing their homework um, or watching TV or playing games. And I can sort of keep an eye on them because my time at the studio is quite limited. Um, trying to help them with their schoolwork has been a challenge. Um, teachers are amazing people um, and we miss them <laughs> um, being able to go to school in person. But um, managing the best I can, as I'm sure many others are in this situation. So, uh, I think if people wanted to go out online and buy these masks and stuff, mm -hmm. like how would they... Uh... So they can visit our website, which is purecolorbaby.ca or find us on Facebook and there is a link there. Um, we are trying to do a launch every week. Uh, they have been selling out every time I post a batch. Um, they sell it, which is good, but it's also difficult because there's such a high demand and we just can't um, make enough of them, unfortunately. But they can go on the website and there is a little button um, on the listing that says notify when available so they can get an email when the masks are back in stock. So thanks, Lindsay, for uh, the, guy, the, uh, the guy that just chatting with me today. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me.